Today on Seattle Refined, get ready to laugh. Everybody leaves here going, that was so awesome. Refined punches its ticket for an emotional roller coaster on stage. Then out of the frying pan, into the fryer. What do you love about the fries here? They're so delicious. They're crispy and they're salty and garlicky. Find out where you won't get shortchanged by these short rib fries. And the tiny Seattle home blowing up the internet. Want to take a guess how much this home is really going for? Seattle Refined starts now. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Seattle Refined. I'm Guard Swanson. You know, one of the things I love about my team here at Refined is we all sort of share a dark sort of gallow sense of humor. That's why a new musical playing right now at Seattle's Act Theater sounds like it's right up our alley. It's just a ride. This ride is literally that. It's a ride. It takes a left. It takes a right. It goes up. It goes down. You never know which way it's going to go and how it's going to strike you. Word is spreading about a quirky musical in Seattle called Ride the Cyclone. On the surface, the plot sounds disturbing. It's all about these six kids that take a roller coaster ride and they die. <laughs> um, they end up in a purgatory where they are given the opportunity to sing to come back to life, and only one of them can come back. And suddenly you're hurled over, up and then down. You get a lot of people who are like, oh no, I don't know what it's about. Oh, they, somebody said there's dead children. But the cast promises as soon as the curtain rises, audiences will realize it's a dark comedy taking them on a fun and emotional ride. Everybody has their person. Yeah. But they're like, that is the person I want to come back. Everybody leaves here going, that was so awesome. Their hearts are full, their faces hurt from smiling, maybe their eyes are a little watery. Lillian Castillo plays one of the six doomed students vying for another chance at life. She says Ride the Cyclone is actually the anti-musical. Everything about it shouldn't work. I don't know how else to explain it, it just does. My life is awesome. They treat every single song of these kids like a big 11 o'clock number, right? Which would usually feel exhausting. Oh, that's a big number, that's a big number. But every single one is like, and they go with us. The audience goes with us about it. And every single song is an earworm. Okay, it's clear. My song is is a fun one because it's the first, I am the first contestant. Kind of it's funny. such a fun pop song, like, <laughs> Dutch, 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 Dutch. What the world needs is people like me. And then the things coming out of her mouth, they're just like, oh, oh no. <laughs> she doesn't quite know all the rules of the game yet, and it's kind of if it all were evil. If it were all the worst things you could say about people in the nicest possible tone. Ride the Cyclone isn't completely new. The musical first ran in Canada 10 years ago, but just recently made its U.S. debut. For the Seattle run, the Fifth Ave and Act Theaters joined forces to make it happen. It's like the perfect mixture of the two. So, you know, Act does a lot of new works um, and uh, Fifth Avenue does a lot of musicals and they they take that opportunity to do new musicals, new works and um, to take a chance on something ridiculous and fun and out of nowhere like our show. I think there's a lot of people that think it's going to end one way and maybe it doesn't end that way and maybe it's not about how it ends at all. At the end of the day, it's all about the ride, you know, and it's all about the way you get there. You can still hop aboard Ride the Cyclone. It runs through May 20th at Act. There's a bit of star power fueling a provocative new comedy playing over at the Seattle Rep right now. You chose not to teach your children their native tongue. Are we really doing this right now? It's called Familiar, and it's written by one of Hollywood's hottest it girls, Danae Guerra. Guerra is one of the stars of The Walking Dead and Black Panther. The comedy takes place at a wedding where old traditions clash with new. Familiar runs through May 27th at the Bagley Wright. We are you better streak on down to Seattle Children's Theater right now if you want to catch the latest and greatest. It's called Naked Mole Rat Gets Dressed, The Rock Experience. It's a musical about dancing to your own drummer. Its last performance is this Sunday. Seattle, you better get this party started because Pink is just about in the house. The Grammy Award-winning superstar is bringing her beautiful trauma tour to Key Arena this Sunday. If you've never seen Pink live, she's reportedly puts on a show that's part rock concert and part Cirque du Soleil. If you're going, I am officially jealous.
Meantime, one of last summer's breakout stars and a refined favorite just released a red hot new track and she's headed to the Northwest to promote it. Did we mention how much we adore Julia Michaels? The singer songwriter just released her latest single, Jump, last week and is already creating big buzz. It was just a year ago Michaels had the song of the summer, the Grammy nominated single Issues. Refine's Britt Thorson had the pleasure of chatting with her. I'm gonna just release a song and like hope six <laughs> people hear it and then it was just everywhere. I was like, whoa, this is insane. When Julia Michaels made a pit stop in Seattle, and I couldn't wait to it. chat with her. The girl is adorably <laughs> fun and a music powerhouse at the ripe old age of 23. I got issues. Her first single, Issues, is topping the charts right now. But what you may not know is she's clocked serious co-writing credits with global pop stars over the last three years already. Do any of these songs ring a bell? Is it too late now to say sorry? Are, have been in the music game for a while, yeah. but you are only more recently an actual singer singing your own songs. Yeah. Tell me about kind of how you decided to go from one to the next. Well, actually I wrote Issues. Yes. And when I wrote Issues, it was the first time that I had ever kept a song for myself and wouldn't let anybody else sing it. Because in the past you'd written, I mean, huge hits, Bieber, yeah. Selena. Can't keep my hands to myself. Were those just not as personal, or were you kind of still trying to find yourself as an artist? You always put a little bit of yourself into everything that you write, and but when you write with, with artists and stuff like that, then it's everybody's perspectives. This was just mine. Well, and I feel like most people would take like baby steps from one to another. Oh and yeah, no. Like, I was given two swimming lessons <laughs> and then just dropped in the ocean. Um, You've got a really cool new single out. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about it. How much is it different from Issues? Oh, it's very different. Huh? Oh, I think you're moving in too close, but I think that it's my body wanting it the most. Like, oh. So Aha uh -huh is about that sort of initial breath before the kiss, that that moment where you want that person to to lean in, and it's just that whole kind of nervous tension that you have with somebody. But it hasn't been the easiest year for Julia. She was very close to Lincoln Park frontman Chester Bennington, who took his own life. Julia even helped him write one of his last hits, Heavy. Why is everything so heavy? Hold it up. Just so much more than I can carry. I didn't think it was real when I got the text message. Uh, I thought it was something that the media had gotten wrong. Gotten wrong, and when I read it, I was just like, "There's no way." He was always fun and funny, and bright and energetic. The world is definitely at a loss yeah. right now. As for Julia, she keeps moving forward and will never stop at her first passion. Songwriting has always been my safe haven. It's the place where I get all of my anxieties out, where I can confront all of my problems. My friend likes to say that I'm trying to be Batman and Bruce Wayne at the same time. So I was like, yeah, actually, that makes sense. Julia is headed back to the Northwest. She's the opening act for Maroon 5's May 30th concert at the Tacoma Dome. Seattle Refine is just getting started. They're back. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Push them away. Got to be penalty points for this. Seattle's Celia Sailors return to Lake Union tonight. We tag along on something called Duck Dodge. Oh, yeah. yeah. But first. They're scrumptious. <laughs> They're so good. Refine's Malia Karlinski throws down the gauntlet on her first annual festival of funky fries. Welcome back to the show, I'm Gard Swanson. A big congrats to a local chef. Last night, Eduardo Jordan's June Baby received the James Beard Award for the best new restaurant in the country. Refine first met Jordan earlier this year, just months after his Southern Cuisine restaurant opened up in Ravenna. 
Jordan is the first African American to win the James Beard Award. He also picked up Best Chef in the Northwest for his first restaurant, Solari. To learn more, head to our website. Did you hear that sound? It can only mean one thing. It's day two of the Refined Festival of Fries. I challenged my team to fan out and find the most unique French fries in Western Washington. And Refined's Valida Karlinski thinks she's got a winner. We're here at 8 Ounce Burger on Capitol Hill, and we've heard they have the best fries in Seattle. I can't wait to check it out. The food is amazing. Everyone here is so welcoming and nice. Don't let the name of 8 Ounce Burger fool you. Yes, they have some of the best burgers in town and serve up crazy good comfort food. But it's really the French fries that put this place on the map. We get a lot of people that just come for this. Even though we're a burger restaurant, a lot of people just come for this. They're so delicious. They're crispy and they're salty and garlicky. Perfect balance. What's your most popular fry on the menu? This one by far. This one? This one. I the short rib that. poutine. They're actually the top selling fries that we have. We offer numerous other fries, op fry options. But these are the best ones? These are the best ones. Without even tasting it, I could tell the short rib poutine is a showstopper. What's the inspiration behind it? Um, just to try to make something different from your traditional poutine. And what is a poutine? Poutine is a traditional Canadian fry with gravy and cheese curds. You can't go wrong with gravy and cheese curds. Yep. How do you make these? So we start with Kennebec potatoes and we fry them. They're, they're very great potatoes for french fries and we use short rib stock and braise the short rib. Oh yum. And then use that stock and make gravy, to make gravy out of them. And then the cheese curds go on top? The cheese curds go on top, but we use mozzarella. And to really bring it home, the short rib poutine is topped with the perfect sunny side up egg. Anything with an egg you is awesome. You can't go wrong with an egg, true. And short rib. So this is all low count. Yeah, very low count. You want to pop that egg yolk. I'm going to pop the egg, all right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Come to mama. They're scrumptious. <laughs> They're so good. Some good stuff. I'm happy to report the short rib poutine lived up to the hype and was seriously excellent. For Seattle Refined, I'm Malia Karlinski. Refined's Festival of Fries Challenge is just heating up. Tomorrow, our very own John Prentice reveals his deep fried discovery. I can't wait. Still to come on Refined, the tiny home sparking big interest. Birds of a feather that sail together, and we celebrate National Coconut Pie Day. Welcome back to the show, I'm Garrett Swanson. Everyone knows the Seattle housing market is absolutely red hot. In many spots, there are more buyers than homes. And a lot of folks are discovering less is more when it comes to square footage. All month long, SeattleRefined.com is featuring a look at some of the tiny homes on the market in our area. For instance, this tiny 580 square foot charmer in South Park is going for just under 300 grand. Check out the complete gallery on our website. And while you're there, make sure to give this gallery a look-see. It's the Fifth Avenue Metropolitan Fashion Week show at the Seattle Art Museum. This year's runway show boasted creative looks from designers here in the Northwest and from around the globe. You can see it all on our website. I know I'm a broken record, but I honestly believe Western Washington is one of the most unique places to live in the entire world. There's just a lot of cool, creative people here who like to have fun. Case in point, the Racers of Duck Dodge. And tonight, the season begins on Lake Union for the Band of Silly Sailors. Refines John Prentice tagged along. Duck Dodge is a beer can sailing race here on Lake Union. Every night at Duck Dodge has a theme. Tonight is Christmas in July. Three, two, one! Everybody is racing for a gold, a silver, or a bronze sticker that they can place on their mask. David Paragoy of the race committee says the rules are simple. No hitting one another. Dodge the ducks, hence the name, and no hitting one another. Aside from that, the competition is... Not very serious at all. <laughs> and the boat that does the best job with the theme wins a special sticker called the Black Duck. I would say that the Black Duck is the most coveted award at Duck Dodge. One contender for the Black Duck, Kirk. 
Captain Kirk. This is a, uh, an outfit one of my crew members, uh, Carrie, got for me. It's one of those uh, Amazon knockoffs, but <laughs> <laughs> it's Christmas in July and it's hot as heck in here, but. <laughs> Carrie Anderson is one of his elves. Yeah, there's professional people, there's students, there's retired people. It's the eight, quite an age range. Everyone's just so friendly. Duck Dodgers say sailing brings people together. Sometimes they get really cozy. Here in Duck Dodge, even when you're swearing at somebody to keep their boat off your boat, you still wave at them and say, have a good night afterward. This is a really long tradition. It's been going on for 43 years. And where else would you want to be on a nice summer night in Seattle than out on the water with about 100 of your closest friends sailing around you? John Prentice, Seattle Refine. The Duck Dodge races take place every Tuesday on Lake Union from now through the summer. Some of this year's themes sound pretty awesome. They include cops and robbers, zombies, and pirate night. Good times. We'll be right back. If you... Hey, welcome back to Refine. I'm Garth Swanson. You know, our weather doesn't quite feel tropical, but the calendar says otherwise. That's because today is National Coconut Cream Pie Day. And I'm going to go out on a limb here and say, no one whips up a better coconut cream pie than Seattle's Dahlia Lounge. Pie making is a tasty art form that few have mastered. So we headed to one of the best pie making spots in town, Tom Douglas's Dahlia Bakery Workshop. This is where a lot of the magic happens. Dahlia Bakery turns out tasty treats, including the famous triple coconut cream pie. We do get a lot of awards, a lot of requests, and almost all of our restaurants serve it. We wanted to know the secret to their success. So Refine was lucky enough to get a coveted cooking lesson from top pastry chef Stacy Fortner. So in this batch, we've got co your coconut milk, milk, vanilla beans, sugar, starches. Everything will cook, becoming custardy and creamy. So next, we're going to assemble our Tom's famous coconut, triple coconut cream pie. So we've chilled our cocoa pie filling all the way that we just made. And we have a pre-cooked coconut pie shell, also baked with coconut in the shell. So we just like to fill this evenly to the edges. Once you get that in there, then the best part, and you can have some fun with this. And then because the whipped cream's not extra sweet, we like to add a little bit of white chocolate shavings, just a touch, not too much. The triple coconut cream pie is a sweet satisfaction, but we wanted more. Up next, Dahlia's double crusted apple caramel pie. So we use a blend of uh, Washington Red and both Granny Smith apples for this. So you get a little tart and a little sweet. So here I've got my sugar. We're gonna add our cardamom and our fresh ground spices. Just a little cinnamon. And always salt. So these look good to me. We're gonna bring them on over. Get ready to add our sugar and spices. And then the best part for last, we're gonna add our homemade caramel sauce. Smells like Christmas or Thanksgiving. <laughs> so now we're gonna fill it with their apple pie filling. So then, this is what most people think is the hard part. I think this is the fun part. You just wanna start by rolling underneath. And if you're not good at rolling, you can just pinch and fold. You can just kind of squish and fold it like this. So the secret to the beautiful pie, to get it nice and golden brown, like we saw, we like to brush it with a little heavy cream. Get it in all the corners, but not too much. All right, now it's time to put the pie in the oven. Both of these pies look amazing, and Stacy swears that you can do this at home. We've posted the recipes on SeattleRefined.com. And as for the calories? If you have to ask, you just probably shouldn't eat it. <laughs> you can find the recipe for Tom Douglas's triple coconut cream pie on our website. Log on to SeattleRefined.com and search for amazing pie recipes. All right, that's going to do for today's show. Thank you so much for watching Seattle Refined. We'll see you next time right back here.